Julie worked in a Prada store in New York. Everything there was expensive, and most clients paid by credit card. But one day, she got a client who got a purse, a wallet, and a dress. All that cost her $3,990. But the woman decided to pay in cash. Julie refused to sell the items to the client and called the police. Why? tried to use to pay. They are two $2,000 bills, which don't exist. The police of Atlanta were notified that a prisoner had escaped from Chicago and taken the plane to Atlanta. Of course, an officer was sent to the airport to find the prisoner and capture them. The police officer spotted three people who looked similar to the criminal. Take a look at the passengers. Which one should be arrested? The prisoner must be this guy. He's the only one who doesn't have any luggage with him. Probably because he was running away and had none. In a small town, a grand robbery happened. Someone robbed a jewelry store in the local mall. At 6.03 p.m., the lights in the whole mall went off for eight minutes. When the lights came back on, the most expensive jewelry pieces were missing from the shelves. The police interrogated three main suspects. Jack said, I was picking out a present for my son in an electronics store when the lights went off. I was so confused as anyone else. Fred said, I wasn't even in the mall at the time. I have no idea what you're talking about. And Stacy said, I was in the bathroom fixing my makeup. I didn't even notice the lights went out. Who is the main suspect? It's Stacy. She said that she hadn't noticed that the light had gone out, but they went off everywhere, including the bathrooms. She would have noticed it, so she's lying. Ava has always wanted to get a cat, but her mom wouldn't allow her to have a pet. So when one day she found a kitten on the street, she brought it home, but kept it a secret. She succeeded for two weeks, but one morning she went down to the kitchen. Have you been hiding a cat in your room? Her mother asked. How did she figure it out? Ava is wearing shorts. Her legs are all scratched, and these scratches are what gave her away. During Halloween, all kinds of creatures flooded a little town, blending in with the citizens. Weeks passed, but some of them stayed, pretending to be humans. The town's detective could catch the remaining ones. He's been tracking a vampire, and he has three suspects. All of them only come out at night. Which one of them is the vampire? This guy is pale, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's a vampire. This guy is wearing a silver chain, so he can't be one. But this guy doesn't have a reflection. This is definitely not a human. Ned works in a club, and his job is to check people's ID cards and not let inside any suspicious people or people below the age of 21. Take a look at these three ID cards and figure out who isn't supposed to enter the club. Okay, here's the first guest for you. What can you say about this man? Don't let him in. The person in the photo is totally different. It's not this guy's ID card. Okay, here's the next one. Keep your eyes wide open. Do you see anything suspicious? She seems fine. Let her in. Okay, the next one. Check it out and make your decision. In or out?
Las Vegas is written with a W. It's a typo, which is unacceptable for official documents. This ID must be fake. Here's the next guest for you to examine. What's your verdict? Will you let her in? She seems fine to me. It must be safe to let her in. What about this girl? Is anything off here? She seems fine to me too. Green light. Okay, the last guest. In or out? Look, the woman in the photo has a brown right eye and a green left eye. The real woman has a brown left eye and a green right eye. This is too suspicious. I wouldn't let her in. Amelia is a huge modern art enthusiast and she wants to take her siblings to a new exhibition. A ticket for one person costs $18. A ticket for two costs $30. And a ticket for three costs $45. If she wants to pay as little as possible, should she invite her two siblings at once or go with each of them separately? It's cheaper if the three of them go together. It'll cost $45. If Amelia went with each of them separately, she would have to pay $30 twice. So she'd pay $60 in total. Ellery has a sweet tooth. And every Friday, she goes candy shopping for the week. Tonight, she bought chocolate bars, jelly beans, and gummy bears. She has all chocolate bars but two, all packs of jelly beans but four, and all packs of gummy bears but four. How many pieces of each type of sweets did she buy? Chocolate bars are all but two, which means that there are two packs of jelly beans and gummy bears together. So there's one pack of jelly beans and one pack of gummy bears. Chocolate and gummy bears are four together, so there are three chocolate bars. Elu is a fairy living in her magical forest. Every day, she takes the same route for a morning flight to the lake. One Friday, she was flying to the lake when she met some other creatures moving towards her. There were two elves, three fairies, and a gnome. How many creatures were going to the lake that Friday morning? Just Elu. Everyone else was going in the opposite direction. Lily and Della are twin sisters. Both girls failed their history test at school, and their mother made them study all weekend. In the middle of the day, Mrs. McAdams came to check on the girls. Take a look at Lily and Della. Which of them hasn't been studying? Della, the book she's reading isn't a history book. It's physics. She must have grabbed the closest book as soon as she heard her mother's footsteps. A rich lady was booking into one of the best hotels in the city. When she got her key, she noticed that her bags had been stolen. The police interrogated three main suspects. Mr. Collins said, I wouldn't steal anything. I'm rich. I live in the penthouse on the 20th floor. Mrs. Jones said, I've just returned to the hotel. I've been out all day. And Mrs. Smith said, I wouldn't steal anything. I have too much stuff myself. Mr. Collins seems shady. He can't live on the 20th floor because there are only 18 floors in the hotel. Amber participated in a game show and she won. She got three exclusive gifts, a Givenchy purse, Armani sunglasses, and a Porsche. But here's a catch. She is to pick her presents herself by choosing between the original and a replica. 
you need to help her pick the correct prize. Here are two Givenchy purses. One of them is the original, and the other is a replica. Which one should Amber choose? This one, it has the correct logo, so it must be the original. Now, there are two seemingly identical pairs of sunglasses, but only one of them is the original from Giorgio Armani. Which one? This one, with the correct logo. And finally, the Porsche. Let's see if you remember their logo. Yes, this is the one. Great job. Jessica is walking down a cold street in an abandoned city. The temperature is so low that steam is coming out of her mouth. She turns the corner and notices a cart filled with food and bottles of water. It's a real treasure, especially in a world where the entire civilization is almost completely destroyed. But as soon as the girl touches the cart, three zombies come out of the building. They're approaching Jessica, stretching out their hands toward her. She grabs the cart and runs away, but then she stops. She understands that they are not zombies, but people. How has she figured it out? All these zombies have steam coming out of their mouths. That means they're breathing and they're alive. One famous movie studio hires new staff, lighting and sound engineers, a director of photography, a mechanic, a gaffer, prop artist, stunt performers, and an editor. But they all need to demonstrate their professional skills to get this job. The candidates have a week to make a short movie. On Monday, they start. Actors and actresses laugh and cry, sound engineers record all their emotions, the DOP captures beautiful pictures, stunt performers are amazing, prop artists create a small town with incredible decorations. One week later, the studio managers are watching the movie. It's terrible. None of the candidates gets the job. Why did this happen? Why couldn't they make a good movie? There was no director among them, and no screenwriter to write a script. Two friends are sitting at the same table in a cafe. One of them is speaking about the extinction of dinosaurs. He's saying scientists are going to get the genetic code of these ancient creatures. The second friend is talking about his sister's party. There were a lot of cool people, great music, and delicious food. Other people sitting in the cafe are annoyed by the guy's loud voices. But why is this dialogue so strange? Why is one of the guys talking about dinosaurs and the other is telling him about a party? What's going on here? These two guys aren't speaking to each other. They're talking on their phones through headphones. It's nighttime. Three girls are standing in line at an ATM inside a bank. The first girl is getting some banknotes. The second one is looking around. The third girl is typing on her phone. Which one is a thief? Well, they're all robbers. The bank is closed. Take a look at the sign on the door. It says open. So the closed side is turned toward the street. Where's my cake? The chef screams. Assistants and junior cooks are running around the kitchen. A steak is burning on a frying pan. The kitchen is filled with smoke. A plate falls to the floor and shatters. The chef screams again. Where's my cake? Who took it? Everyone says they've been cooking. None of them wants to admit eating the cake. The chef doesn't believe them. Who do you think stole the cake? Nobody. The cake is in the oven, see? 
Jack is in a cold cell. There's only bare ground under his feet. In the cell, there's one window, but it's impossible to escape through because it's located too high. There are no stairs and no chairs, just a shovel. Jack has no water and no food. He needs to get out of there in two days. But he can't dig a tunnel since the walls are too thick and go deep underground. Jack will get exhausted long before he digs his way to freedom. So how can he escape? He needs to dig a large hole in the ground and use the dirt to make a small hill. He can then climb it and reach the window. Marty walks around an IT university building. Three people are following him and discussing something. Marty enters the Hall of Holograms. People walk inside too. Marty sits down on a chair. As for the three people, they go on the stage, still talking. Some of them are holograms. But who? This guy has a flashing nail on his right index finger. This girl has two left hands. The girl in the middle is slightly transparent. They all seem to be holograms. But wait a minute. Take a look at Marty. He's sitting on a chair, but his body isn't touching the surface of the seat. He's not real either. It's early morning. Sam leaves the house and goes to the lake. The sun hasn't risen yet. The water is crystal clear. Frogs are croaking in the distance. Sam takes several photos of nature and one selfie. He posts the pictures and writes this caption. I've had a great run. There is nothing better than a morning workout, my dear followers. Have a great day. After that, the guy returns home and goes back to bed. He sleeps until lunch and then takes his phone and sees hundreds of comments. <laughs> I wish I had such a run. Dude, why do you deceive us like that? Here it is, a real day of the champion. Obviously, people have found out that Sam didn't run in the morning. But how? He wrote that he had just had a run, but his face isn't red and he isn't sweaty at all. There are four different countries on one distant continent. Each of these countries has its own emblem with one simple symbol. The same number of people live in each of the countries – nine ordinary citizens and one monster. One queen, one king, and one prince. Two jesters sometimes drop by these kingdoms. What is this continent? It's a deck of cards. It contains nine regular cards – Ace, Queen, King, Jack, and Joker. Once on a cold winter evening, someone broke into a bakery. When the baker came to the building in the morning, he noticed that the lock was broken. He called the police and reported a break-in. Then he went inside and realized that the thief hadn't stolen anything. At that moment, the police arrived. The baker told him that the place hadn't been robbed. But a police officer inspected the room and declared that someone had still broken the law. What happened there? There are almost imperceptible footprints leading to the pantry. The thief must have hidden there to wait for the baker to receive the day's earnings. Mickey has been wandering in a desert for several hours. He's tired, thirsty, hungry, and sleepy. He notices a big house standing on the hot sand. Mickey goes inside and sees a massive block of ice in the center. Someone must have put it there for a reason. Mickey licks the ice, but it doesn't quench his thirst. He decides to wait. It takes a couple of seconds for one drop of water to evaporate in the desert, so the ice should melt soon. The guy leaves the building and goes for a walk. Several hours later, he returns to the house, but nothing has changed. The ice hasn't melted. How is this possible?
There are air conditioners on the ceiling. They keep the temperature in the room low and prevent the ice from melting. Florence, Anya, and Margot are walking along the beach, telling one another about the past week. All the girls look wealthy and successful, but several people are taking photos of them. It means that at least one of these girls is a celebrity. But who? It's Anya. Look, that guy is wearing a t-shirt with her face on it. Marcus is leaving a large shopping mall. He pulls his phone out of the pocket and accidentally drops it. Oh no, the screen is cracked. Marcus gets into a taxi and goes to a phone repair service. He sees dozens of shops. Each of them offers its own services. Battery replacement. The best service in the city. Let's fix your microphone. And dozens of others. Help Marcus choose where to go. Do you see a small store with the We Can Change the Screen Glass sign? This is what Marcus needs. Somewhere at sea, a huge ship is traveling. People on the deck are having fun, speaking, drinking cocktails, eating delicious food, enjoying beautiful seascapes. This is a passenger liner. It doesn't have any secret mission. The passengers are ordinary people with ordinary jobs. They discuss the weather, new theater plays, music, books, and travel destinations. They all seem to be intelligent and educated. The strange thing is that no one takes any photos and posts them on the internet. OK, the internet may not be working so far from the shore, but why don't they take selfies? Who said this cruise was taking place nowadays? It happened before the era of smartphones and the internet. A young guy is sitting on hot sand somewhere in the desert. There are several boxes, cans, sandbags, and water bottles around him. The guy looks up. He sees a giant balloon flying further and further away. There are two people in the gondola. They're waving and wishing him luck. A broken match lies on the guy's palm. What do you think happened here? Three people were flying in a hot air balloon over a desert. At some point, they began to run out of fuel. To prolong the flight, they decided to drop their cargo. Then they realized it was also necessary to get rid of one person. This way, the balloon's weight would decrease and it would consume less fuel. The travelers decided to cast lots. Whoever got a broken match would have to stay in the desert. This guy lost. Ironically, his name is Sandy. Ah, don't worry, he gets rescued in about an hour by a limousine from the Burj Khalifa Hotel in Dubai. He'll be in luxury, while the other two people are stuck in a hot air balloon over the desert. <laughs> Who's the loser now? There was a heist in the Great Museum of Art. A very valuable and important painting was stolen. A detective investigated the crime scene and managed to find the person who had stolen the painting. However, when the detective asked the thief to give it back, the criminal gave him three copies of the same painting. He refused to tell the police which one was original. But the detective immediately figured it out. How do you think he did it? Do you see that each painting has a different frame? But only one of them is similar to the frames of other paintings in the museum. And since this museum is known to use the same style of frames, this one is the original painting. Jeremy was accepted to the best school of witchcraft and wizardry. One of the classes he had to take was about transforming into animals. Three professors taught that class, and each of them specialized in transforming into one certain animal. Can you tell which professor turns into what kind of animal? Do you see that the first professor has a forked tongue? 
she must transform into a snake. Have you noticed that the second professor has a lion's tail? Her animal must be a lion. And do you see bear claws the third professor has? Then he must turn into a grizzly bear. Tony was going to study abroad for one semester. He flew into another country, found his new dorm where he was going to stay, and unpacked his stuff. Then he called his parents to inform them he'd arrived. They asked him, what time is it there? Tony was pretty tired and jet-lagged, so he couldn't immediately tell what time it was. Can you help Tony figure out the time? Look, the Eiffel Tower and Sydney Opera House views are just posters. But you can actually see Mount Fuji through the window. So, Tony is in Tokyo, and it's 8.45 there. Carly, Zoe woke up one day and found themselves in a weird place that looked like a jail. Which of them will be able to escape? Carly can escape because the bars of her prison cell are made of wax. She'll be able to use the candle on the floor behind her back to melt them. Zoe can also escape. Do you see several rats in the corner that are munching on the bars? It's because the bars of the girl's cell are made of salted breadsticks. And she can eat them and escape. Isabella was a princess and the heir to the throne. One day, an evil witch lured her into an enchanted forest so that she could take over the kingdom. Isabella got lost, but fortunately, she had a magic pendant. The king's magician gave it to her some time ago, claiming it would help her find her way back if she ever got lost. She used the pendant, and three spirit animals appeared. The first spirit animal was an owl, the second one was a butterfly, and the third spirit animal was a hawk. Only one of them knew the way back to the castle. But if Isabella chose to follow the wrong animal, she would find herself even further away from her kingdom. Which spirit animal should she follow? Have you noticed the kingdom banner in the throne room? It has a butterfly on it. So it's the official symbol of this kingdom. Isabella should follow the butterfly. Toby was a rich businessman. One day, he came back home from a dinner party and saw that somebody had broken into his house and stolen his expensive watch from his safe. He called the police. They investigated the crime scene and found three suspects. Gordon said that at that time, he'd been at home trying to make his teenage kids go to bed. Danny said he'd spent the whole night at a party with his friends. And Matt claimed that he'd been at a movie theater watching a new superhero movie between 12 and 2 a.m. The police immediately realized who'd broken into Toby's house and stolen the watch. Have you figured it out? It was Matt. When Toby arrived home, it was 11.30 p.m., So it doesn't matter where Matt was between 12 and 2 a.m. Elliot was a crazy scientist who was obsessed with the idea of parallel universes. He dedicated his whole life to figuring out how to create portals to other dimensions. One day, he finally succeeded in building a portal machine. When he tried to test it, three portals appeared in front of him. And then the machine just blew up. And since he had meddled with the laws of physics, the universe where he lived started to collapse. The scientist had to choose one of the portals to escape through, and fast. The first portal opened to the universe in which Elliot was a supervillain. The second portal opened in the world in which the man was a ruthless king. The third portal opened on the planet where Elliot was an underwater creature. Which portal should he choose? Do you see the portal machine the supervillain Elliot is holding? It's the same as the one that destroyed itself. Apparently, supervillain Elliot is a scientist as well. 
he might be able to help the real Elliot to bring his original universe back by making a better portal machine. Sally was at a crowded concert. Suddenly, she felt somebody reaching into her bag and pulling out her wallet that only had her credit cards inside. She couldn't see who the person was, but after checking the footage from the surveillance cameras, security guards were able to narrow it down to three suspects. Joshua said he had been sharing concert videos on his social media and didn't have anything to do with the theft. Jennifer said she was super rich and didn't need anyone else's wallet with credit cards. She only used cash when she went shopping. Penny said she had been singing along to the song the band had been playing, so she didn't even know what had happened. The security guards immediately figured out who the thief was. Who stole Sally's wallet? Nobody told Jennifer that the wallet contained only credit cards. But somehow, she still knew it. She must have stolen it. Mary found a new job in another city, so she had to move. The realtor found three options for Mary to choose from and took her to see each of them. First, she brought Mary to apartment number one, which was located downtown. Second, she took the woman to apartment number two, which was within walking distance of a subway station. After that, she took Mary to apartment number 3, which was next to a grocery store. Which apartment should Mary choose? Since apartment number 1 has a rat living in it, and apartment number 3 has a crack in one of the walls, Mary should choose apartment number 2. Miss Sanders took her students camping at the weekend. She wanted to tell them about forest plants. During the trip, one of the students wandered off and got lost in the forest. Hours passed, but he couldn't find his way back. The guy felt very hungry, but he didn't have any food with him. That was when he saw three different bushes with three different kinds of berries in front of him. Only one type of berries was safe to eat, and the other two were poisonous. Which berry should he eat as he's waiting to be rescued? Remember the poster that was in the classroom? It stated that these two kinds of berries were poisonous, so only these ones are safe to eat. Sandy was driving across the country to visit her family. She was tired of being on the road and wanted to take a break. She saw a diner and stopped there to have something to eat and rest. The diner looked empty, old, and dirty. The waitress told her there were only three meal options to choose from and asked her which one she wanted to eat. So, which one looks safe to eat? Do you see the fumes coming from the first meal? They're green. That can't be a good sign. And the third meal has a little bug on it. Yikes! So Sandy should eat the second meal. And get the heck out of there. Audrey won the Best Actress Award at a film festival. But when she left the stage and went to give an interview to the reporters, her award was stolen. A police officer arrived and found three suspects. The first suspect was Grace, a cleaning lady. She said she had been taking selfies with her favorite celebrities backstage and didn't have anything to do with the award. The second suspect was Gabrielle, a reporter. She said she had stolen the award because she had been with other reporters waiting for her turn to ask Audrey some questions. The third suspect was Catherine, an actress. She said she was not the one who had stolen the award because she had been among guests watching the show. Besides, she already won the Best Actress Award last year. The police officer knew who was lying. And you? Take a closer look at the selfie Grace took. You can see Catherine behind, sneaking away with the award. Well, you've tried to get into the secret supernatural service your whole life. Now there's just one step left to reach that goal. 
You need to pass an exam to prove you can handle the supernatural and paranormal. Keep track of how many answers you get right. Your results await at the end. A helicopter leaves you on the shore. Your mission? Get to the other side of the island where the lifeboat will arrive for you. Seems easy enough on an island this small, but here's the catch. A few people and a lot of supernatural monsters are the only inhabitants of this island. You see three roads with signs near each of them. The first leads to vampires. The second road takes you to zombies. The third one leads to alligators. Which road do you choose? You have 10 seconds to decide. Choose the road to alligators. As I said, only people and monsters live on the island. No real-world creatures here. You take the third road and end up in a huge meadow. The scorching sun is beating down on you, and you want to find some shade. Fortunately, you see two houses ahead. The first looks very old and decrepit. The windows are broken. It's missing most of its shutters, and it looks like the whole thing could collapse at any minute. The second house looks brand new, sturdy, clean, but you notice it doesn't have any windows at all. Where will you go? 10 seconds on the clock. On this strange island, the second house without windows is a sure sign that the inhabitant is afraid of sunlight. You don't want to land in the trap of vampires. You choose the first house. You find yourself in a large room. Everything's covered in cobwebs. A thick layer of dust coats the furniture, and the floor is creaky. You find a can on the table. All it says is, antidote. You're sure this could be useful, so you put it in your pocket. You also find a bunch of keys and go to the far end of the room. There are three doors before you. The first door has several locks on it, but the keys you found will open them. The second door clearly says, werewolf inside. There are no signs on the third door, and it looks inviting, clean, and cobweb-free. Which door do you choose? Your 10 seconds starts now. The locks on the first door mean there must be someone or something kept inside that shouldn't be let out. Better not open it. If the third door has no webs or dust on it, then someone must use it regularly. It's likely the werewolf lives there. So you choose the second door. The exit leads you to a park with trees and shrubs. It's strange how quaint it looks for a place like this. You see a group of seven people ahead. They also look totally normal, but as soon as you come closer, you notice there's definitely something off about a few of them. They're zombies. How can you identify them? Careful, they might spot you. You have only seven seconds now. The right answer is three. The guy is trying to find his eyes that fell out. The girl on the bench is eating ice cream with body parts in it. And this man doesn't even notice the dog biting his leg. You're afraid of zombies as much as the next guy. But the really scary thing is those people standing nonchalantly nearby. Anyway, you discreetly pass by this strange crew and eventually come to a mountain. You climb to the top and enjoy the view of a beautiful sunset. To move on, you need to cross one of the two bridges. Strangers are standing at the other end of each one. You're sure one of them is a werewolf. But who is it? How can you tell? Looks like those zombies caught your scent. Hurry, you only have seven seconds. You've watched the sunset, which means it'll get dark soon. Tonight is a full moon, 
so you'll be able to see which of these people will turn into a werewolf. You've crossed the safe bridge. It's nighttime, but the bright full moon illuminates the path for you. You see a huge castle ahead. You're sure ghosts live there, but you don't care. It's better to face ghosts than stay outside with all these other creatures. You enter the castle and find yourself at a ball. Eight people with masks are dancing. You realize this is a test of your attentiveness. How many of these people are ghosts? Seven seconds until you're spotted. That lady is dancing, but her feet aren't touching the floor. She's floating. Everyone is wearing modern dresses and costumes. But that couple over there is dressed as if they're from the Victorian era. Ghosts can't change clothes, right? You've spotted three ghosts, and you decide not to interfere with their dance. Gotta keep moving on. You come to another room. You see a huge table with a buffet of food. Fried chicken, french fries, pizza, vegetables, fruit, soda, mouth-watering desserts and pastries. Eight people are sitting at the table. You've worked up quite an appetite by now and consider having a bite. But intuition tells you something is wrong here. You realize these are all vampires. But how did you know? You better decide in five seconds. Why is all the food on the table untouched? Does anyone in this room really want to eat? Oh, they definitely want to dine, but not on ordinary food. They want your blood. Hurry, run! You book it out of there, but the vampires pursue you. To be saved, you need to choose one of three rooms along the way. There's a huge fire in the first room. A pit with sharp spears at the bottom awaits you in the second. The third room is filled with poisonous gas. Which one will you choose? Hurry, they'll be here in five seconds. The correct answer is the room with the gas. If you breathe in the poisonous stuff, the vampires won't drink your toxic blood. But how will you save yourself? Oh, that's right. Earlier, you found an antidote. You drink it, fully recover, and leave the mansion. You go through the jungle and finally find the shore. Perfect, you've reached your goal. That's when your joy is cut short by the sight of three people flailing out in the water. Help! We can't swim! You're about to dive in the water to save them, but your intuition tells you something's fishy here. Two of them are sea monsters trying to lure you into a trap. But which ones? You only have five seconds to save the real person. One of them has webbed fingers, and that one's gills are visible. But that guy over there still needs your help. So you save him and head back to the shore. You make a fire to keep warm. That's when a bright beam of light shines on you from the sky. It's the helicopter here to pick you up after the test. Hooray! It throws a rope ladder down. You start to approach it, but then you realize something's not right. Do you climb up or do you trust your instincts? You better decide in five seconds. Helicopter? A lifeboat was supposed to arrive for you, remember? You don't board the helicopter, but unfortunately, your new friend did. The chopper quickly darts away into the stars. Yes, it was a UFO. That's when the lifeboat arrives. Congrats, you made it off the island. But is your score enough to pass the test? Zero to three points. You'd have a rough time lasting in the secret supernatural service. You need to train your attention to detail and decision-making skills. Don't worry, you'll get better with practice. Four to seven points. You're quite smart and resourceful, but you'll still have some fine-tuning to do in the service. Even if you're usually good at decision-making and not succumbing to panic, one slip-up could cost you. 8 to 10 points. You passed with flying colors. The Secret Supernatural Service will be honored to have such a survival expert among their ranks. Nice job, but don't get too overconfident. You still need to stay on high alert in this field.